Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Some. Today we are going to be talking about function transformations, but involving the reflection aspect. So let's get into it. So there are three big rules that you need to know about for reflection. So if it is a reflection, you can have a reflection of negative f of x. So if you took the regular function and then you made the entire thing negative, it would reflect across the x axis. And then if you had a reflection of f of negative x, that would reflect across the y-axis, okay? And then there's some other things that just kind of deal with it but are very different, okay? So specifically, there is, let's say, y equals ax squared. If a is greater than 1 or a big number, then it is going to stretch vertically. Okay, and I'm going to show you what all these mean. If A happened to be less than 1, it would stretch horizontally. I like to think of this as skinny and the horizontal as like kind of fat. Okay? Now, if A and only A switches to being a negative A, that flips graph over itself okay so if it was facing up it would face down in the exact same location type of thing all right so let's go through some examples and show you what that means starting with a reflection over the x-axis so let's say we have y equals um x squared plus 2x okay so that graph for those of you that don't know, which I'm going to graph for you real fast, it's going to be here and here at 0 and negative 2. It's going to look something like that. All right. Now, if I wanted to reflect it across the x-axis, that would be this guy right here, x-axis. Um, the new graph would look more like this, where it would kind of just be flipped over. So you should expect that the x squared part might become negative mm -hmm. because now it's facing down. So at the bare minimum, you should think that. Um, but we also, we don't want it to just flip on itself. We want it to flip completely over the x-axis. So the rule is reflection of, over the x-axis is negative f of x. So you put a negative over the entire function that's where people mess up. They don't put it over the, like, they put it over one thing, but not the entire function, and then distribute. So the reflect across the x-axis would be a negative x squared minus 2x. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I have graphed right there. Reflected across the x-axis. All right? So that's one of them. We're going to do each and every one. If... We want another example of that. Yeah, I think we need to. Y equals, let's say it was just um, 3x squared minus 4x. Without doing the graph, reflecting across the uh, x-axis would be a negative in front of the entire thing. And we get negative 3x squared, distribute, plus 4x. Sometimes you're not asked to actually graph, you just want the function. Bam, there's the function. All right. Next one on the list is reflect across the y-axis. Reflecting across the y-axis means that we have a negative x here, which is f of negative x. And if you have to do that, then if we have the function y equals, let's continue with x squared plus 2x, instead of it reflecting and Flipping over the x-axis, we want to reflect over the y-axis. And if we're doing that, the new graph would be over here, but still need to face up. Okay, well, that's different. If it still needs to face up, the way you do that is by 
plugging in a negative x for every one of these x's. So if I want to reflect across the y-axis, I replace. And when I'm replacing it, I'm putting it in parentheses because that shows that I have substituted something in. I have substituted in a negative x for each and every one of these x's. From here, negative x squared is negative 1x squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 still is positive 1. 2 times negative 1x, though, changes to be negative 2x. This function right here is the reflected over the y-axis and is what I have graphed. All right, another example. Let's say we only had to have the equation. Let's do 3x squared. Let's do negative 3x squared plus 2x minus 7. So if I wanted to reflect across the y-axis, it would be changing this x for a negative x, changing this x for a negative x, and the 7 doesn't have anything. So it's still going to be minus 7 there. So this would be, oops, squared, um, negative 3 times negative x squared. Well, negative 3 is what I would have to do after I do the squaring part. And again, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 x squared. 2 times negative 1 makes negative 2x minus 7. So the official function is negative 3x squared minus 2x minus 7. y equals, there you have it. If you had to graph it, fine, but that's the equation that you would need. Okay, the last thing is a little easier. We're going to do the stretching and the flipping without doing too much effort. So let's say... Uh, for these last few right here, we got y equals a, a, the leading coefficient. So we'll take a basic parabola, y equals x squared. Looks like this. What if I wanted to graph y equals 3x squared? Well, what would that look like? It would be a little skinnier. Color-coded for you. And last but not least, what if I wanted to do y equals... No, not negative. Let's do one-fifth x squared. That would be if it is less than one. If it is a fraction, it is stretched horizontally, so it's going to be a little lower. It's going to stretch this away. So the one-fifth makes it stretch horizontally. The anything bigger than one would stretch it vertically and have it reach for the sky. And if it's normal... It, it would just kind of look more like a normal parabola. The last thing that sometimes gets people confused is if the A becomes negative, that does not guarantee it reflected across the x-axis. If only the A is flipped, let's say we have y equals x, well, we'll do 3x squared minus 7, okay? If I change the A and only the A, that would be y equals negative 3x squared minus 7. What would that look like? Well, the original 3x squared minus 7 would be down here at negative 7 and would be facing up. And it should be stretched vertically because there's a 3 in front, remember? Oh, sorry. It was off the graph. Um, so here, that's the original, 3x squared minus 7. What about if I just change it to a negative in front? The only thing that's going to change then it's still going to have the y-intercept of 7, but now it faces down. If you wanted to reflect over the entirety of the x-axis, you would have had to put a negative over the entirety of the equation. And then it would be negative 3x squared and a plus 7. This would reflect over the x-axis. If it only changes the a value, then it reflects over itself. So if it reflects over the entirety, then it would be over the entire function. If it's only the a, then it reflects over itself. So going way back to the originals, there they are. Over the entire function, x-axis, over only the a, it flips over itself. That is a common misconception. But if you notice more things are changing, you should assume it does a little bit more than just flip over itself. 
And on the 10-minute mark, I will see everybody later. That's it for this episode. Bye.